Okay, stop, stop. This guitar is just cripplingly beyond belief. I can't play it. Hey everyone, welcome to Gear There and Everywhere, where uh, we talk about Beatles gear and uh, other weird Beatles facts. Um, as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Dom, Ryan, and Paul, but uh, we have a special announcement. We have a new member of GTE, and that is Michael Sokil. Hey! Whoa! <laughs> Amazing. What? That's crazy. Who let him Thank in the all. door? Welcome, Michael. We we took a vote beforehand, and you just barely passed. So, I think I demand um, a recount. Now. I said no. <laughs> well, th thank you, guys. I've rewatched the Now and Then episode literally like ten times. Like this Amazing. is the kind of podcast I'd watch, even if I weren't part of it. So happy to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. And you have like the oldest Beatles YouTube channel of all of us. So it's a story. Are you calling me old? You are a dinosaur, and we're happy Man, to have you here. Stopping my video. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> now that we've offended Michael, the new member, um, today we are talking about all things casinos. The Epiphone Casino, as you know, um, was played by John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and George Harrison. So it's a pretty unusual super Beatle guitar. And um, yeah, we're going to kick it off first by just introducing the Epiphone Casino, what it is. Um, yeah, Paul, do you want to... Every, everyone has a casino here, so I'm going to show my... Show them off, yeah. yeah. Yeah, here's what I've got here. I think... Man, you guys, uh, you guys have such nice ones. I just have the... I think <laughs> Michael and I have the same one, except his is a Bigsby. We both have the Inspired by John Lennon model. And then Dom has one that's basically the same, but Chinese pickups. Is that right? Yeah. Um, Paul, what do you got? Inspired by natural, and then I have a sunburst inspired by as well that I don't have currently. Cool. Michael then, has two, right? Yeah, I've got the Korean oh, Peerless okay. from 2000. Those are the ones that are hard to find now, right? They're up there. Yeah, I, like I said, I just sold three of them. I had three of them. I had a natural one, a sunburst one, and a turquoise one, and I sold all three of them together in like a, a bundle deal. The Korean um, ones were good, yeah. Yeah, see, I mean, like I was saying, all right, well, I, you know, I thought we were going to save that for later on in the episode, but I don't, personally, me, I'm not a fan of the Korean ones because of the longer neck, how the neck joints higher up, and it's not true to the 60s where it has a lower joint. It makes it so it's easier to play and a little bit better, but it also makes it a little longer. Also, I don't really like the neck profile too much, but I heard different Korean ones were different years had different neck pro profiles. But all three of mine were all different years, and they were all the exact same. I'm not a fan. I don't really like. The, I honestly like the Chinese built ones better. Hmm. Um, maybe not in terms of quality, but in terms of how they feel and play and everything, I like the Chinese better. Michael, what's the other one you have here? Uh, this is inspired by John Lennon, and it was modded by whoever I bought it from. It's got the Bigsby, and it's got Les Paul tuners for some reason. Nice. I, just, I thought it looked hella cool. And mine Sam. is the um, the USA model, which has um, it's way cooler than your guys. It has the wrong uh, trapoise, tra tra trapeze. Wait, no, trapezoid. Trapezoid, trapezoid. trapezoid inlays the wrong way. So I don't know why did they do that. They apparently wanted to um, differentiate the models, so this is a special. It's stupid. I don't know. Yeah. I never um, noticed that. Yeah. And you're Don't about you to have put the a... correct headstock too, the correct McCartney spec headstock. It's the larger, oh. earlier headstock. And oh. um, Gibson P90s, um, and this is royal tan, so it's a cool color. And you're about to put a Bigsby on it, right? Yep, got my nylon saddles and my Bigsby, so I'm gonna join the Michael Dom train. Oh, I gotta join it sometime. I yeah, would like to add a little something about mine. While I don't use it a whole lot these days, this was actually the first guitar I ever bought with my own money. I was in eighth grade. So it's got a lot of sentimentality. It's one of the only reasons I haven't sold it yet. You know. Yeah, I mean, they reissue them so much. They're pretty good as a starter Beatles guitar. Yeah, yeah they are. I mean... Um, yeah, Dom, your Sgt. Pepper video where you play it on all three parts is one of my favorite Beatles <laughs> YouTube videos. It's just perfect guitar playing. Yeah, it sounds great, too. I appreciate it. And it looks just like George's and Paul's, actually. Well, I guess more like John and George's, but uh, the, the finish is nice. It yeah, in certain lights it does, but it's a very orange, you know. Your guys is uh, nail it far better. 
Um, so Sam, do you want to kick it off with talking about the origin of the casino and like the early yeah. models? Paul, and were you gonna say something? Oh me? No, no, I wasn't saying anything. Oh okay. Um, yeah. So let's do some early history. I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, so the um, the interesting thing about Epiphone was that it was acquired by Gibson in 1957, and Gibson made the ES330 was the original model in 1959 and it had black covered P90s dot inlays. Uh, they also made a cherry finish one. And uh, yeah, that's it's very similar to a casino. It's literally the same, has button tuners. So it's, you know, there's certain, and it has a Gibson logo on the headstock, we should say. But um, the interesting thing is Epiphone one started in 1961 and it had, um, I don't know if you can see this like uh, white thing on the, the headstock, um, started with dot inlays and a uh, tortoise pick guard. It's a little different. Um, and yeah, so a few years after the ES330, Epiphone introduces it. And, um, and Epiphone is owned by Gibson has been owned by Gibson for a while at this point, right? Since 1957. Yeah, yeah but Epiphone's been around for a while. It's since the 20, 1920s, I think. Mm -hmm. um, made their own electric guitars before Gibson acquired them. But um, yeah, the, the Beatle guitars came a little later. Um, Brian, do you want to introduce when that happened? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> Paul is the first one to get uh, an Epiphone Casino, and he had been, I guess, talking with his friend John Mayall, um, and he had heard the whole thing about, like, John Mayall had been playing him all these blues records, and, like, the people that were mimicking those things, like, you know, Eric Clapton and things, and he was playing, like, oh, these are these guys' influences, and he told him, like, you gotta get a hollow body guitar to get that sort of feedback going, and um, unlike the other, like, sort of sibling models to the casino like the riviera the casino is fully hollow whereas the um like a riviera which would be equivalent to a 335 but with uh little or uh, small pickups um it has a center block of wood down the middle and then the sides are hollow um but Epif uh, casino is fully hollow um and so paul was sort of intrigued by this and thought like oh i'll go get one and i guess the idea is that uh th this was around late 64 and uh so he wanted one specifically with a bigsby and he i guess couldn't find a left-handed model which is you know that understandable and he got we should a right -handed... also say he didn't play guitar on beatles records at this point so it was kind of right in order to play lead right yeah, he hadn't, arguably hadn't ever played guitar on any Beatles record, except Maybe for like, yesterday, right? No, this is after. Mm -hmm. We're oh. talking about '64 still. Um, oh, Fall of the Sun, did he play? Yeah, I I used to think that he did, but I don't actually know because there's bass on that, and if it's four track, they probably wouldn't have screwed around with having someone else play bass. So I don't know for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so around de sometime in December, probably in, I don't know, yeah. I guess we don't exactly know when, but sometime in December he went and bought this. There was, in Beatles gear, there's a thought that he might have bought it at the same time that John bought his... Uh, I think this is right. That he might have bought it at the same time John bought his... No, I'm thinking of the Texan. I have Beatles gear here. Yeah, I... in the, he says that he might have bought the Texan at the same time that John bought the Gibson J160E, the the 64 model. But then yeah, he gets this in December. I think he got the Texan around the same time. Here's This is actually Paul's guitar. And Paul still beautiful. uses this one. And you can see the headstock on, on Paul's. Well, we'll show more photos later. But yeah, the headstock do on Paul's. Do we have a theory about like why Paul was interested in playing more leads? Like, Do we think there was disappointment in George or they were just expanding their sound? I mean, I'm sure, I mean, in many ways, I would think of it as almost Paul trying to reclaim his sound because he was a guitar player before that. And he was like, well, John's not going to be the bass player and George is pretty good at guitar. So I guess I got to be bass. And then once 
they got into the area of doing a lot of overdubs he probably thought oh i could play guitar on this like i why should i you know why should i keep myself from doing that he was a guitarist first before playing the bass anyway Mm -hmm. um yeah so december he buys it uh and the first couple of photos we see are at the christmas shows rehearsals that they were because they were putting on like a play type of thing and there's this one of paul and george looking at it and the strings have not been restrung yet at this point it's always brand new essentially yeah uh and it's his model is a 62 have the uh here we go this is a different photo from that day the christmas shows and it looks like it's uh strung righty so mm-hmm. they didn't even they didn't know how to set it up and i think he also had to um set it up so that the uh strap button was on the other side or does yeah it they had matter, to I add guess? a strap button i think or well mm-hmm. actually they said they added a strap button but like on me and on ours the strap button is on the back so this is Lennon playing matter. Paul's Casino. And you can see Paul was pointing out before that uh, the sides of the guitar are a little lighter than the you know, the dark finish. Yeah, I thought Which it was like a no most yeah. finish, but all it is, it just seen, I saw other pictures while we were talking prior to this, and I didn't see anything, but it looks like it is just a brown, but it's a lighter brown in certain areas. That's all it is. Yeah, so that's Paul playing it now. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy that that it's survived for this long without getting stolen or anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you want me to go start going through photos and we can talk about when it was first used on Beatles records? Is it is it worth pointing out just how much a casino cost? Yeah, yeah. Mention that. So Beatles gear. I have to go back and do it again, but essentially, I think it was like what 160 something guineas, which is. Or at 172 pound, British pounds. Yeah, so that would have been like 400 and something dollars. That would have been, that would be today, like 4,700 bucks. So I mean, these guitars were not cheap at all. In fact, they were. I believe Beatles Gear also said they were the most expensive guitar that Epiphone offered at the time. And that's not to say they're like wildly more expensive than what the other guitars the Beatles were playing, right? Because the, the J160s were pretty expensive, too. They were. Um, it, it sort of puts it into a weird perspective, because you'd think, like, oh, if I buy one of these vintage guitars now, it's going to cost me a lot more than it would have cost them at the time. But, like, that's not right. entirely true. They were give expensive me, then, too. Yeah. Give me a second. I, I remember what page it was on. It was um, like 270, I think. The casino retailed... At 164 guineas, or 172 pounds, or about $480 then. So you can adjust that to inflation. That would be, it says here, 3,150 pounds or $4,700 in today's money. But that was and this was that was written like 15 years ago. <laughs> no, this this is the uh, 20. I think it's the 2018 version. Oh, okay. Or 20. 4,700 dollars. Wow. It's crazy. What's well, I'm saying? I you know. The most expensive. Time. I've spent that much money. It's got on. the one with the least amount of wood in it, and they charge more. Right. Um, but they were considered on it too. very high end at the time. Because mm. they were made at the same factory that all the Gibson stuff. Yeah, made Kalamazoo. Yeah. Um, I nowadays, some, not so much. Um, specs about Paul's. Do you want to hear yeah, like, yeah. a few things it. about Paul's um, casino? It was uh, serial number... 84075 which would mean it shipped from Gibson because Gibson factory was Epiphone November 1st 1962 and that is interesting because it's kind of like Keith Richards um, casino which um, the earlier casinos had the black um, not the chrome pickups so Paul's was a little after that Keith's had the, uh, the black plastic covers but they both had the large headstock, which is what mine has. And um, you can see Paul's also has black knobs. Um, but other than that, it's not that different from John and George's, but we'll get into how there's little spec differences. Let me pull up a picture, actually, because Keith's had um, a different like sideways trapeze uh, thing. Um, sorry, one second. Um, interestingly, Keith also had a ES330 guitar later on. 
Um, and this was the only guitar he brought on the first American tour. Is that right? So you can see the black pickup covers and the, uh, the tailpiece is not a big speed. It's a, like a sideways, like straight thing with the, uh, the E there. So it's so, a little different. And this is a MLO 61 type yeah. of thing. So maybe a 61. That was 61 was the first year of Epiphone. Uh, you can see Brian Jones playing it there. Jones. So it was very early. That was Epiphone's variation of the Bigsby. Interesting. All right. Yeah, Gibson had similar stuff. Anyway. Well, let me pull up some photos here. Uh, I'll just... So we get... Paul gets his first, right? Yeah. And what's the first day that we see him using it? So the first day that we see it show up in photos is... Um, and, and I'm only showing studio photos here. There's obviously a lot of other photos, but this is the easiest ones to find. Um, can you guys still see that? Yeah. Okay. So this is February 19th of 65. And this is the day they did You're Gonna Lose That Girl. And you can also tell from these photos that he's playing... You can see it better in the other photos from this session, but... He's playing this through an AC-100, which has a, a big baffle in front of it, actually. Uh, and it's mic'd pretty close. So he's sitting pretty close to this AC-100. Um, but yeah, I think that's all the photos. And you can see it's still got the Bigsby on it, but he's just got it sort of turned away. Um, that'll become interesting later on in this episode. Uh, on saddles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what can, how can you tell about the saddles here? because that's white there um and what what is the alternative if it wasn't a nylon saddles when did they switch that i think 1970 or 71 they switched the metal okay only um, less paul's came metal the sgs and all the um i mean i was just because it crosses between epiphone and gibson all of those all came with nylon basically except for the less paul we don't think it was actually used on you're gonna lose no, that girl no i don't think it was on you're gonna lose that girl right. so i believe what it's used on on help is another girl where paul plays the main guitar part it's on ticket to ride where it's that little the little bits that come in and out and i'm trying to remember is that it yeah um and then it wouldn't be on like I'm down or anything. Yeah, so it's it's just those two, I think. But Paul's I've doing also a real... got the the, uh, the night before too. Oh, oh that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. The solo yep. on the night before that he doubles with George. Um, Which octave was he playing though? Good question. Yeah. No idea. Um, and then after that, I believe the next time it sure. shows up is not until November third. Of 65. of 65 yeah because this the is the session where just book. this is a michelle this, where it's just michelle every sessions, guitar yeah. shows up in these photos and you can see paul's basement uh in the background of a couple shots and i believe yeah there it is leaning there up against is. the basement oh yeah. Uh, yeah i don't know that there's actually any pictures of him holding it in these sessions but it is in the room so it's, it's very present. well it's definitely on uh, rubber sole and so for rubber sole it's most likely on drive my car where paul plays the solo and um, maybe the intro and outro too right yeah prob probably um and then uh the next one is maybe i'm looking through you yep right where the the bit that sort of goes on top of the organ And is that it? I don't know if he... He wouldn't have been on wait, would he? No. Obviously, that's the help sessions, but... Um, I just know wait has a lot of overdubs. Well, it um, might be worth mentioning uh, if you got trouble. It's, is it? Is he <laughs> yeah, on that? it's all he three of them. That. It's yeah. all three of them. I guess I forgot that. He's playing... Uh, he's the one going... Oh, uh, okay. Seven strikes. Gotcha. And that's... That's it yeah. for that album, I'm pretty sure. So that's Paul playing those parts? Yeah, so John's going, uh, you know, he's, he's doing the... And then Paul's going... 
Yeah. Oh, it's buried. Out of my head because I can't hear you, Dom. He'll what? come up. He'll come up in the I episode. Can... It'll be fine. It will oh, fix that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, you'll hear it. I'm unplugged anyway. This is my first episode. All right, let me get used to what's going on here. Um, um and then I don't. There is one other set of anything else. There is one other set of uh, 65 photos. It might be in. I don't think it is though. We've got the day tripper solo. That's the yeah. Name. No, yes. he's not on that. I don't know, man. This, this may be a debate. I would have said Strat. Yeah, I, I don't... think it's Strat. I don't. Th oh, he is. The... A, it is in these photos. So the this, first this could the be the first guitar cars. break on Tripper is a Strat, but that ending solo, you know, do 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 do. That's a sounds like Paul to me. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Lots of experiments to be done. Play. Now, would that yeah, have been no, the, on the basement or the AC100? I he didn't get the basement. basement until Rubber Soul, which is worth pointing out. He only had AC100 for help. So mm -hmm. basement did come later with the Rickenbacker base. Gotcha. Mm. Okay. Um, so that's 65. And then on to 66, we go back to these photos so great picture the oh, first yeah. photo the first day we see it in 66 now john and george got their casinos sometime in the spring I'm not exactly sure when but we'll show the first time they show up in session photos um so this is paul on i believe the early version of got to get you into my life this is april 11th of 66 and he's playing through a mm -hmm. seven y'all 7120 um, yeah, but it's also worth pointing out, is that Paul? Or is what? that Fall? <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Asking uh, the real questions here. Hey, that's when the lip... Oh, the oh yeah, yeah, also, no. there you go. You can see the uh, strap knob. We saw that oh, in the other cool. pictures, the strap knob, yeah. too. That was already there. Gotcha. I just didn't notice it before. Um, Do you think he'd be using round wounds or flats? Probably rounds. Rounds. We already saw the pictures on all that. Yeah, yeah with the wound yeah, it's G. It's gotta be rounds. Yeah. Can you tell by the pictures what kind of strings they are? Depending it was that on one the picture. picture that was real up close. Yeah. And had sent it in the group. Wait, that one. We were looking at it. it had a wound G, right. and it was round wounds. Do you guys think it's Paul playing the solo on "Got to Get You Into My Life"? I think in, it is. In the He's release one of them. version or the outtake? Uh, the on the release version. Yeah. I well, there's know. two guitars happening. There's a tremolo one and then like a distorted one, I think. That's very SG-ish um, to me. But Taxman was Paul. Yeah, Taxman's definitely yeah. Paul. And then the other one, if we go a couple days later here, this is April 14th. And Paperback Writer. Paul on this. Right. So yeah. the basic track for Paperback Writer was done on the 13th. And this day they did overdub. So there's other photos of Paul doing the bass for it. Um but so this is the basic track for Rain is this day. So this is Paul playing his detuned casino for the Rain lead probably. And again through seventy one twenty amps. He um, the uh Burns new Sonic bass. I my theory with that is that the that was on the basic track and then they just sort of scrubbed it and when yeah. Paul overdubbed. Probably. Uh, and then if we go to this next photo, which is the same day, you see the black strat there. But this is a weird thing on Paul's casino. And we know this is Paul's because, well, when it's got the strap knob there and the headstock shape. Um, the Bigsby has been, or the arm of the Bigsby has been taken off, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know if we have any theories for that, but maybe if, I don't know, you guys got anything? It was getting in the way. He wanted it off. But then it's we would also possible. have to take a look to see when it comes back. Right. When it does come back, is it moved to the other side? No. Done? I don't I think okay. it's still on the same side. Um no. Yeah, so the Bigsby goes off uh yeah, we were mentioning other things that he did. So Taxman solo, he plays it on here, there, and everywhere. Uh is that it? I've got I'm only sleeping the solo. That's George though, right? That's George yeah, doing no. a couple of guitars, I I think. I don't think that's the two of them together. Do we know what guitar that might have been for George? Strat. So, yeah, it's either Strat, Casino, or SG. Yeah. 
Um, if we keep going to the next set of photos, this is April 27th. This is the first time we see John's in the photos, and you can see that because he's got the trapeze tailpiece and not the uh, Bigsby. Right off the rip, too, with John's, his pit guard never sat right. It always sat lower. We never had it, like, oh, interesting. fully screwed on. I not flush. Yeah. That's it wasn't tightened all the way. Never noticed that. Um, also... Take note of the uh, take note of the black washer. Yeah, so on Paul's, there's nothing there. And if we go... I believe John's. Epiphone used to do that to hide blemishes. Hmm. Pole was screwed up. It was elongated. So yeah. they needed to put that on. Or, is it a spacer? Yeah, it's a, it's a well, it's a washer. Yeah, like it was used to, and the hole was just elongated, so they couldn't put that, you know, just that right. So it was, little... yeah, man. Yeah, so they use that to hide the elongation of the hole. I think they call that the goof ring. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, so that's now now John. He doesn't really use any other electrics except for the. I mean, if you count the J one sixty, because. Well, I guess he he too. had the black strat. He used the Gretsch on Rain and Paperback Writer, probably. Um, so the rest of his stuff on. The rest of his stuff, I don't know. Well, Dom, you just did. She said, she said, and you thought John was using the black strat, right? That's what it sounds like to me. I don't know what you guys think, but but I agree. Like strat. Yeah, All of John's it. parts on well, Revolver you, you... should be either the Casino or the black strat, right? You really think so? Well, what else would they be? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, either Casino or Black or Strat. Assuming you know, this, but, yeah. He right. still had the Blue Strat, and and then he had the Gretsch as well. But Klaus that's Vorman, good. Klaus Vorman, actually, uh, in a couple of drawings he did of the she said she said sessions, showed the Black Strat, right. and he hasn't really been wrong in these things either. Hmm. In, yeah, I think it's, it's probably a good bet. He's using the Black Strat a bunch. Um. So the only all like John the guitar mystery for me on Revolver is Anya Bird can sing the rhythm. It just mm. sounds yeah, you so guys funny. were arguing between yeah. uh, right. Casino and Gretsch, right? Yeah. But not Strat, probably. I tried it. It's too harsh. It's just Agreed. It's, yeah. yeah. It doesn't sound right. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking maybe the 325 was resurrected for one song, but that doesn't really make sense. Mm. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Should we talk about John and George getting their casinos? Because I mean, there's one interesting thing about the timing. We see, was it April, Ryan? Was we don't know exactly. The first studio photo I have is from April. Right. April 27th. And we know that they probably got them because um, Paul had one. They liked the sound. But um, it's interesting to say George had the S345 during Rubber Soul. He already had a hollow Gibson. So he liked the warmer sound. But one weird conspiracy theory I'll throw out there is that for the Shea Stadium overdubs in early 66, um, Mal Evans, the, the new book of his diaries, um, Mal actually said that they rented equipment for these um, Shea Stadium overdubs. And we don't know what they were recording, um, but it wasn't Beatle guitars. So it's possible that they tried out casinos, possible that they just got them later, but thought i'd throw it out there yeah definitely possible um also worth noting maybe is that while paul was interested in the feedback uh, i don't believe george cared about that kind of thing nearly as much um don't know how that influenced their playing a whole lot but uh maybe worth noting uh okay let's keep going so that's revolver done the next session I've got photo. a couple more a couple more songs for revolver real quick just gonna hit okay. them real quick yeah love you too yep. has a really strange droning like drop c guitar part it sounds like a casino to me i don't know who's playing it but and the volume swells as well the fuzzy yeah yeah and then dr robert yep um i guess that could be john or george and then the Tomorrow Never Knows solo. Yes. Right. Do you think Probably. Dr. Robert, I think that is still the casino with the SG. It is. Yeah. You think that Tomorrow Never Knows solo is the casino? I'm not sure what else it would be. Like, what else? Maybe I mean, the he SG? had the SG at that point, too, so. I don't know. I got pretty close with the casino. Yeah. Casino, I guess I would vote casino over SG for that. Yeah. 
Uh, George obviously kept using of, the um, Tomorrow Never Knows, like with the Wesley. Um, before, All right, where he's just he's just droning the the, the sea. sea. But that was yeah. the first session, so I'm wondering if he had the casino at that point or not. Could be. Yeah, yeah. that was March, I think. So I'm not sure. That could be earlier in April, but I'm not. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, Can I talk about before you keep going the the specs of John and George? Yeah, yeah, casinos? go for it. You mentioned the nut with. Yeah, I just wanted to mention. So, um, John and George's were both 1965 casinos. So, um, the difference is the headstock is no longer the large one. It's like everyone else is on this. Zoom. Yeah, I can show mine real quick. And it had that E on the. Um, trust round cover um otherwise it's pretty much the same the only thing is um gibson and epiphone had different nut widths um so paul and like keith richards the early ones would be 11 16 which is kind of like most modern reissues of gibson that we know it's a very full big nut width and that's what paul had uh by 65 you started to get a thinner nut width and john had um serial number i'll pull it up here uh, 328393 we don't know exactly what date it shipped I, I'm not sure if we do but we know that it was middle of 65 and what's interesting is there was a transition nut width um, in mid 65 so John had it was um, 1 and 5 eighths which is slightly narrower than Paul's George's casino is almost a 1966 it's the end of 65 and by then they had transitioned to a very thin nut with uh, nine sixteenth. So it's only two, was that millimeters different from Paul's 11 sixteenths, but um, you, any Gibson guitar um, post 1966 that you'll play has that thin nut width. Do you so, know what the, the inspired by models do? I think almost every reissue has um, the 11 16th like Paul except maybe the revolution some of those John Lennon want inspired by is a John Lennon reissue isn't it mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but they also but they a... did the the 1965 reissue then they did the uh that has a true nut width to it well that was John's dad. they literally went to the Dakota and took yeah. John's and measured everything about it so it's an exact replica yeah I think some of those John ones have the one and five eighths so it's a transition yeah. nut width but yeah. you are fully right, though, Sam, because especially with the J160 video and your J160 and mine, we both have 66s, and even my 67 as well, the neck gets very, very narrow. And I have that also in my upcoming J160 video, the fact that Perry also talks about it in his video, the fact that the Gibsons and the same with the J160s and all that, with the Les Pauls in the 50s, they had a wide standard neck, just like what, Orion, you have on your J160. You should notice that your diameter of your neck fretboard is just the same straight down and your neck in the back of it should be really thick and wide too yeah. like a baseball bat then in around 60 they started changing the back of the neck to be thinner but it still maintained that thick wide board then 65 they went thinner 66 even thinner and then they maintained that thinness which i love the thin i absolutely right. love it so like if you played an sg most of them have the 60s like thin neck profile so imagine a uh, a thin nut width and a thin profile. It's like you're almost playing like a, a metal guitar. It's like very thin, easy to play. So uh, Paul's would be a little bit meatier. John and George a little um, yeah. thinner nut. So, um, cool. Let's go on to the next set of photos. Uh, the next one we've got is November twenty fourth of sixty six. So this is the beginning of the Pepper Sessions. This is the strawberry, the first Strawberry Fields Forever session, and you can see John carrying his guitar in, uh, just you know, without a case. No case. Paul in the background. I have Backward. a quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt again, but but when did they start using them live, and up until what point? Because we didn't cover that. So I mean, I I think it it's just most of '66. I know George brought the SG with him i think there's a few photos or maybe a video in germany where george has the sg well it was uh it, it was the enemy poll winners concert in 66 and uh brian epstein refused to let anyone film it why is that it was it was some agreement that the the organizers didn't sign or something 
can't remember exactly what it was. We have photos of that. So and we George have played the video DSG. session of like uh, Tokyo and Germany in '66. Yeah. Them playing, and it's on the top of the Pops episode. That yeah, yeah. So this kind you of a dramatic that. change too, because like fans were used to the Rickenbacker Gretsch combo, and then all of a sudden we've got two casinos, we've got new suits, like not just the dark black suits. You wonder how folks may have been like, oh, they're they're changing, you know? They're that was their coolest look in my opinion. Agreed. One of them. Yeah. yeah. The pole the winners concert, just a cool looking guitar too. Oh, absolutely, yeah. totally That's awesome. The uh, I just looked. The pole winners concert was on May first. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so they stopped touring, and then we get to they, yeah they stopped touring off. just studio. Um, so we've got John. Uh, see, hang on one sec. Got no mustache yet. Yeah. Yeah. So we got John, uh, late sixty six, November twenty fourth. Um, and then that's it right there, and then we go into sixty seven. Uh, hang on. Oh yeah. That's a cool photo. Very cool photo. Yeah, so yeah. George so... took his pick guard off sometime between what we were just showing, right? Yeah, well, that was so... he took he had his pick guard off by Candlestick Park. This is so late February yeah. 28th of 67 already. This is a Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds rehearsal. Um mm. yeah, so like you said no pick guard. He's got the Bigsby obviously. Bigsby's very worn coloring there. All the paint, all the black's worn off. Um yeah. Oh, and you mentioned the screw thing. What was the deal with that? Yeah, so you'll notice it on vintage Bigsby's. I believe they were the Selmer imported Bigsby's, like uh, like Paul's and George's, where there was a Phillips head where, I mean, if you look on mine, you look on Mike's too. Um, oh, hang on. Let me stop streaming. There's really... Show yours again. You see that? There's no Phillips head. It's just kind of a, a nub. Mm. Yeah. You know, on the, on the old <laughs> Selmer ones, there was a... Yeah, it was a Phillips head. Good luck finding one online too. If you want to do that mod, you, you can't. Huh? They're impossible to find. But yeah, if you look at George's there, he's got the Phillips yeah. head screw. Um, it's kind of an interesting. Uh, John's, uh, I believe, John's fifty-eight three twenty-five had the same thing. Also, the screw or the nubbin? The, the screw. Oh wow! Yeah. Also worth noting. Uh, no offense to George, but this is probably his worst facial hair period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah He's rocking the like chin strap i mean goes into the <laughs> not that i wouldn't you know not that i wouldn't want it in the strawberry fields music video because it's great but <laughs> did grow out his beard for bangladesh pretty long yeah yeah and, and this is the same too. day now this is john across from him and you can see something weirds going on with the neck well for one can someone talk about this charm here I forget the they sold they sold it online. I don't know if they still do. Years ago, I had looked it up. It's just some kind of like charm. It's a little weave. It's um, I don't know if it was made out of pet, uh, fabric. I think it was made out of like that little wood or something. Oh, crap, I should know like that. Um, but the other thing I was gonna mention was just that the back of his neck. You can see where it started. It starts dark here, but then it just sort of fades to white. And that's because John had painted it. I don't know the so, exact date that he painted it. Looking like uh, it was, it's called a Suzu charm. Right. Oh, yeah. Suzu charm. Yeah. I got it up. So he over. got it in 66 when they were on tour in Japan. Okay. Interesting. It was removed when he sanded the finish off prior to recording Revolution. You can buy them for $17.50 online. We're on yeah, the same oh, web. I'm trying to right now. Yep. I don't think I can. You can see. That's what it looks like up close. Yeah, so there's a photo of them together. I'll show a photo of it. Or I'll this is Russ Lease's website. Yeah. Com. Yeah. But like uh, I was saying, it's made out of like a wood or something like that. It's like a little charm type of, you know, well, it is a charm, isn't it? Yeah, so let's keep going. All right, keep going. Now we got mm. March 3rd. I believe this is the, this is, this is the Pepper, like, lead guitar. So... This is a bit of controversy here. Is so this is again Paul's casino. There's this photo of him with the Esquire, which he obviously had by this point. Supposedly he got this in maybe '66. Um, so there's a there's a question of whether Paul played the lead on Pepper through this Esquire, uh, Esquire through the Selmer amp. Perry Stanley has one of these uh, Selmer amps, and he says he doesn't think it's the Selmer amp. He thinks it's the Vox UL730. So. 
take that for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, Paul's Casino is obviously still there. And this is the same day. We've got George's Casino. That's actually Paul's that's Casino. Paul's. That's oh, Paul's yeah, you're casino. right. You're right, because yeah. the strings are upside down. You want to uh, take a second and uh, notice the trust rod cover on Paul's versus the trust rod cover on yeah. the yeah, 65 models? There's yeah. a trust yeah, rod cover on anything. his. Yeah. This is that. Oh, yeah. And the thinner headstock. Yeah. Got the Epiphone logo on it. Yeah. Um, let's keep going. This is the back of Paul's. That's the back of Paul's, yeah. So you can see the you know nice brown. They also, uh, you can't really see the back that well, but the backs uh, were sort of this brown color that they do now on the newer reissues. But for a while, those Chinese ones, like I think Dom's, is just solid. Oh no, yours is fun. Yours does that. Also, you can see the oh, you... it's called a sting. That little black thing at the back of the where the neck meets the headstock. Uh huh. Um, they call that a sting when it's like a tri triangular black huh. thing. What yeah. does it do? What's it for? It's just aesthetic. You see it on some Gibson and Epiphone. So, Dom, what do you know? Which of the reissues did solid black back versus sunburst back? I the inspired by. Well, the inspired by is like a brown. No, there was no solid black, was there? I thought no. Okay, maybe no. I'm just completely wrong on that. I thought I had played one that had the solid black now, back. Now, I'm actually ticked because you know. Now Epiphone's doing like you know super nice black uh, or brown back, and I've got this, which looks a little cheapy. But no, the inspired by Lennon Casinos and the 1965 reissue Casinos and the Elitis, they all have the brown back, while the okay. standard the run of the mill, too. yeah, the USA ones as well, but the run of the mill Chinese ones have the um, you know this and the solid black back of the neck. Right. Looks nice. Like yeah, it. not bad. Nobody really sees the back anyway. Well, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Well, I mean, we're looking at the photos. We're oh, and the to sides see... too. <laughs> we're about to see a photo of the back here. So, this is something interesting. So, we mentioned Jor uh, John's is painted. You can see a little paint bleed with the, these little drops here. Because um, he did this himself. He just sprayed something on it. Um, see the charm pretty Yeah, well there's there, the too. charm. Yeah. Uh, and this is, I believe this is good morning, good morning overdubs, or maybe the basic track. And then also, uh, might be with a little help from my friends. <laughs> That's just a photo I threw in cause it's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's I love so that. I'm going to change my profile picture to that. <laughs> it's so good. It's so my fun. sleep paralysis demon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is John's weird paint job that he did on the back of it. Oh, and you can see the charm a little better. Um, and he's got the mustache now. Uh, so, yeah, it's like white, and then this darker area is kind of a blue, I think. Um, and we thought this was, like, the only photo, or these two are the only photos, but it turns out... Oh, there's another one. This is kind of cool. You can see yeah, close up. It's the back, yeah. But we found... Oh, building up the suspense. There's another one of Paul. The baseman. We found this photo, which is showing from the control room at the top of those stairs where we just saw that picture of John. And John's playing right there. And you can see the white back with the little kind of bluish color there. But that's the uh, only color uh, photo. That's the only color photo of it. And you can see Paul's over by the basement. Um, which is pretty interesting. It's a cool shot. And John's playing through the Yule 730 there, um, which we've mentioned on previous episodes, but there was only 100 of those made, and 76 got taken back to the factory and taken apart for parts because they wanted to move to solid state. And so only 24 of those amps exist, which I think three of which were the Beatles ones, and Perry Stanley has one of them. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's just some more from that day of John. This is now May 17th. Um, Look, um, if you ever notice the the differentiation, the differences the in the bursts yeah. between John and George's, and Paul's too. George's is more like what Sam's is like. Where Royal like, Tan. Ours have that black, yeah. 
Yeah, so George's yeah. was actually sunburst like John's, but for some reason the dye faded into a more red color. It's really nice. Yeah, it looks yeah, way it better. Does look nice. But Royal Tan was actually a different thing. It's like it was a separate uh, finish that you could buy, like custom order, I guess. Mm. And his black paint is fully gone at this point. Um, we got Paul again. Very dusty headstock. <laughs> Here's the picture too with the strings where you can really tell as oh, well. That's right. Oh yeah, man, a that's a G. that's a clean photo too. Jeez. Uh, yeah. You got a wow and G and those are regular standard electric guitar yeah. strings. Go down the neck too, you can really see it. Oh man, that crusty you fretboard never saw too. Paul's thumb that close up, did you? <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. so there's the that big... Phillips head screw you see there? Yeah, the Bigsby arm is attached there. That's a very high quality photo. Damn. Yeah, you check out the it. nut. Did he cut that yet for a left-handed player? Oh no, big he did not. Spot. No, that's interesting. There you go. But, you know, he just he cut it open to make like the the low. The other side yeah, yeah. But that's it though. He just left that alone. Yeah. Interesting. And I don't remember what this day is. Um. Yeah, seven thirty. We still got Paul's there. Um, we're back to George. This is same day. Could that sunburst? Yeah, Beautiful. that sunburst looks so yeah. nice. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else notable about that picture, but it's a great photo. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell the difference between the two bursts on theirs. Mm -hmm. George's knob black in that photo, or is it just the reflection? No, it's just the. <laughs> I think you're just seeing uh, the big Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the knobs are slightly different. Did anyone mention that yet? The knobs are black on Paul's, but they're like more of this gold color on the later issued ones. Sometimes I think I don't know, like my mic don't work or something like that. Do you guys hear me when I say yeah. stuff? <laughs> Did you say something? I said it like four times. <laughs> yeah, I know you said that a while ago. I just wanted to point it out. Um, that's another great high quality photo kind of uh all right what else we got now this is i believe all you need is love is that right yeah rehearsals yeah so uh, that's john's casino is it not how i can't really tell there might be another photo i don't see a big to be on it yeah you're right well that's trapeze tailpiece check out the knob well, no yeah. well... the knob is now black should we talk about Sgt. Pepper songs Wait, that have... Paul, you were going to say something? Wait a second. No, don't worry about it. Wait a second, I'm confused. <laughs> Where'd that white stuff go? It's not paying. It was here. Maybe this is George's. It, yeah, maybe. This could be George's, and then the other one is definitely John's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There it um, is. So the knob is black now. If we go back to an earlier one of John, we can see... Well, for one, his pick guard is attached and the knob's not black. And then if we go forward to June 24th, the knob is black, pick guard's gone, and the, the mounting bracket for the pick guard is still there. <laughs> which is That's so classic John Lennon, too. Like, knobs falling off, not taking care of oh, yeah. you, you think yeah. his pick guard just fell off and he just didn't? Yeah, feel probably. Like yeah, he just didn't bother. Yeah. Sounds like our boy. Oh, this is a cool yep. photo because you can see what Jackie's plugged into on the 730. Like uh, concert, say, uh, Conquer. It? Oh, is, is that Conquer? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is Magical Mystery Tour Sessions now. Can we oh, hit the right. Pepper songs real quick? That may feature yeah, 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 cover the Pepper stuff. Let me stop sharing. So, pretty sure we have a casino on Strawberry Fields. Um, George Jr. In, in the first piece, at least. Um, Penny Lane, there are some kind of Wait, isn't guitar that, that guitar, isn't that John on Strawberry Fields? John couldn't play like that. <laughs> what is John I play? thought it was John. I think is it, it is John. George? I think Rod it, Taylor I think had it, it as, uh, he had it as Paul, didn't he? Did he really? Well, Paul at the end, yeah. he do the part that's like... <laughs> I that think, song well, that was is a weird. separate recording for that one. That it song is a lot of this to our future episode list. Yeah, I think this is yeah, to talk about later. Debate. I think it's John on that 
that first one. But I do think it's Casino, though. Okay. The yeah, next um, one was Petty Lane. Yeah, there are some stabs under the piano chords, just hitting the basic chords. Um, for Pepper, the opening track, obviously. I should plug Dom's video, too. Look up How Dom's many casinos, uh, casinos do you think are on that? Dom's got three for all three parts. That's what Matabu did, too, years ago. Sounds perfect to me. I copied so, Matabu. There's a chance it's the Esquire. <laughs> Probably not. I don't know. Um, and then, um, good morning, with a little good morning. Help my friends. Oh. Yeah, a little help. I thought that was Strat, no? With a little help. No. No, a little help is the middle position on the casino. And we got Getting Better. Yeah, yep. I think Sammy yeah. used one on the uh, octaves, the high G octaves. I think that might have been Paul, yeah. Uh, good Morning, Good Morning. John's rhythm guitar part. What about the solo? Yeah, probably Paul's solo is on his casino, I would bet. You think that's not the Esquire? Or the Esquire. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it sounds very reminiscent of Taxman. So, Hard I would to argue tell. for the casino. Yeah. Uh, Next one I got is the um, Sergeant Pepper reprise. Yes, double casinos on that one. At least double, yeah. Yeah. And yes, fixing a hole is the strat. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, agreed. That's all I have for Pepper. Then we're into all you need is love. What about is um, benefit of Mr. Kite? Would that be Esquire? So on the solo. The is there an electric guitar on that? Song? The part yeah, that's like the... um, that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I mean, it's so staccato and muted that it doesn't really... The tone's going to be difficult to parse out. Yeah. I saw somewhere that's an acoustic guitar, but it wasn't a trustworthy source. I think it was just a, hmm. a guess or speculation. That's also another episode, yeah. I think. Right. Um, uh, although... I think we're caught up to the present. I think we I might were as at well all... You need his love. Go back through a couple of those photos because... Oh, yeah. I don't remember which day is which. One of these sets of photos, maybe it's this day, has um, them with the big harmonicas. But, that was uh, uh, Mr. Kite, wasn't it? Yeah, that's Mr. Kite. I asked, um, I'm sorry, two little questions, though, yeah. um, because we're missing when I'm 64 and... That has a um, solo in the middle, right? Yeah, there's... I thought it was John going like... <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, good call. And that would have to be the casino if it's John. Yeah, yeah. and good call. Um, lovely Rita Lucy in the sky, have it, right? No, lovely Rita's acoustic, but then uh, Lucy in the sky has the and the. I assume that was the strat. I don't know why. Yeah, I, don't, I think it that's strat. Like strat. No. Okay, I ha I don't have a formed opinion on that one. Um. Okay. Is that is that it for Pepper? Yep. All right. On to Magical Mystery Tour. So oh, wait. I... Sorry. Oh. Um. All you need is love. I think we think that's the strat on the album, right? Yeah. And the B side, baby, you're a rich man. Well, this is Magical Mystery Tour. We're gonna go through uh, the photos. Okay. So I'm, there might not. Oh, is no, there a guitar mind. on Baby You're a Rich never Man? Mind. That was all the photos. <laughs> oh yeah. That's one of those songs I never listened to. It just kind of weirds me out. <laughs> but it's in the social network. It's like one of the only times the song got licensed for a movie. Being what? Fun. Yeah, it's in the credits. The end credits, yeah. Out of all the songs. It's a great movie. Wow. Big budget. <laughs> and yeah, and the Glass man. Onion, too. More uh, recently, uh, Glass Onion, the um, Knives Out sequel. Oh, did wow. They use, the very end. Did they yeah. use Glass Onion? They did, in the end credits, oh, just like nice. social network. That's incredible. I'd never do that. Someone, someone wanted to make some money. Started selling off. And they did. Um, okay, well, I was wrong. That was like the only photo from Magical Mystery Tour, so we can go ahead and talk about it. Um, we also have um, like those little in-between sessions, like between P Pepper and Magical Mystery Tour. Like, um, it's all hello, too goodbye. Much. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, it's all too much. That's a good call. So that's a whole episode oh. on its own. But real quick, do I want to just go around the room? What do you guys think that lead guitar and in the intro is? No fucking idea. <laughs> well, it's definitely got a Bigsby, right? It's it's a guitar. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I, it's not a I, whammy bar. I don't kind. think George cared about that kind of sound as much. I think that's Paul. I think Paul was going for a Hendrix thing. He was obsessed with mm -hmm. Jimi Hendrix around this time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe it was Paul. 
Yeah. Sam, you got close in your mocker demo video. Didn't you do the feedback a little bit? Yeah, and I don't have a Bigsby. I was doing the um, behind the bridge oh, pushing yeah, thing. That. Sounded pretty no good. Way, no way John would have done that on the song, though, right? He People did the whole, uh, you know, he did the that behind thing on Old Darling. Yeah. yeah. People say it was John on It's All Too Much, but he didn't have a Bigsby, so how... And, and a Strat wouldn't... Anyway, it's a whole other episode. Um. Okay. So, what what other songs are from that? Um, Only a northern song. Um, doesn't have guitar. Um, and altogether now doesn't have electric. I don't believe so. I think we're good. Okay. Hello, goodbye. Wasn't that somewhere before Magical Mystery Tour? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello, really goodbye is in the in that May was or something. Later on or June. Okay. I think that was like fall '67. Okay, I can't remember I think the dates exactly right. We, you know my name, look up the number, doesn't have guitar either. Um, well, I don't have any other photos from 67. So, uh, Magical Mystery Tour, the the title track. is You you had a lot of debate on this, Sam, when you did your cover recently. What do you think? I did a test between Casino and Strat, and I, I have no idea. I went with Casino, but... Because it's got all the flange added on the actual record, on the original, right? Yeah, the guitar going... <laughs> And who is that that's playing? That's George. John was on J160. Right. Okay. Um, Hello, goodbye. It's probably the casino. I would say 95%. Yeah. Yeah. Fool on the Hill doesn't have anything, right? That's got acoustic. Well, yeah, but no, uh, no electric. No electric. Yeah. Um,. Who then... Way doesn't have anything. Flying? I think that's a strat. It sounds very stratty. Which guitar? That one? There's that one. Then there's the one that's going like, uh, you can't even hear it, but it's the lockdown. That was J160, that's, I think. Yeah, that's yeah, that sounds acoustic yeah, yeah. to me. Yeah. All out of tune now. I always thought that was like the J160. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Probably... past the audition, Michael. Unless it's, it's unless it's Paul and Texan or something. No, it's. I always thought it was like the casino and then the unplugged J one sixty playing it in unison. Hmm. We'll so do weird. a deep dive at some point. That's what Matabu did. That's just how I remember it. All right, is that all of Matt's all of Magical Mystery Tour? Right. Uh, I guess all you need is love. Did we say? Is strap, but also um. I think there was one more. Um, Your mother should know is um, J160. Is there um, a guitar on that? Yeah, there's an acoustic guitar on Your mother should know. I just learned that recently. I think it was George. Um, I'm the Walrus is Strat, right? Oh, mm -hmm. right. I don't know how we skipped that. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're on to a 68. The next so... one I have is the Hey Jude single, August 68 on my uh... list. Anyway. Yeah, we're well, fast actually, we have an interesting question here because, oh wow, the bracket's still there. <laughs> the the madman, he didn't take Brackets. it off for six months. That's crazy. It was John, there in June, yeah. and it's still there the next February. How? <laughs> he didn't care. How did he not take five seconds to unscrew it? My goodness, I never noticed that. Um. So Jerry Hammock seems to believe that there's this shot in the, um, this is obviously a Hey Bulldog session. Um, there's this shot where John gives the casino to George in the middle of the, uh, the video. And Jerry Hammock said that that was evidence that George plays the solo on the casino. I don't know if I buy that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that at all. I think it's probably just SG, right? Yeah, it's was definitely it Abley House who did the cover with the SG Abley House, however you say it, and it sounds perfect to me on the SG. I've seen there's yeah. one guy who did a demo through a Conqueror, and that sounded perfect to me too. What guitar? A uh, SG. Okay. Um, probably, it's probably the SG. Yeah. Uh, there the are some inner... theories that they played it at the same time that John and George are playing that as one performance. So and I guess it could be both. Lady Madonna is this time too. Uh, that's what is that? Doubled up casino and SG. Okay, with who they played into the same amp. I'm pretty sure, actually. 
Ooh. Like who? Paul and John George? and John and George, George played oh. through the uh, UL seven or no the Conqueror I guess right? Yeah. Huh. I didn't know that. Um, and then right after those three with Inner Light, they go off to India. They did an attempt at across the universe, but that doesn't have electric. I don't think. Um, well, there is a uh, a Wawa on that version of Across the Universe, so there is electric on that. Oh. Mm. But it's very subtle. I have no idea what guitar it was. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, we'll leave that to another episode. Uh, all right. So now, oh my gosh! Drip down. How is this bracket still there? Still there. He, he's got it stripped and it's still there. I, how Which did I not tells ever me that, that they stripped it, took it off, and then he put it back on. Weird. He really wanted that bracket. <laughs> is this, now, is this black screw or whatever this is? That is, is these, that mine had that. I've lost it, but it's like a spacer. Yeah, like a rubber spacer or something? Yeah. Is that there on these other photos? Yeah. Okay. We it just, just blends in with the summers. summers. Okay. Well, anyways, that's crazy. You didn't take the bracket off. Has anyone that does covers left a bracket on? <laughs> I did that. I, done it I was like a freshman yeah. in high school. I that's did it awesome. with mine. Yeah. Uh, Both cool. Oh, this is interesting. So what is this smudge here? That is, that is a, um, I don't know. So, what was the story? What What do we think happened with the black knob? He lost it. Oh, you think he just lost the knob and he stuck another one on? Yeah, probably. And that's what happened with the three twenty five. They just kept falling off. Right. Yeah, he, just, he he went through a lot of sets of knobs on the three. Grabbed the first thing he saw. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So this is June twenty eighth. So they've been in India for a little while. They got talking to Donovan. He told John and George something like, you got to sand down your guitars to the natural finish to let the wood breathe or whatever um, to really get the tones out. And so they both went and did that. And this is, I believe, the one of the earlier takes of Good Night where John's playing uh, Casino on that. And that's, I mean, I think most of us agreed that, that they should have kept it that way. Yeah. I think it's better than the release. That's version. a good one good version of it um there's another photo of him on the floor look at the strings didn't even clip them yeah and poke someone's eye out with those things <laughs> oh boy uh next <clears throat> now we're into july brackets, brackets still there brackets still hanging on brackets. <laughs> can someone check beatles gear and see if it's still on the guitar today <laughs> actually that, hold on oh no no let's just go through i want to i don't want to blow the anticipation i want to buy the roof the concert it's gone so yeah okay. but maybe he put it back on okay then this is martha my dear i don't know what this is i didn't know john was there for martha my dear well i think it's arguable he played the solo on martha my dear right i don't think so i thought this was um Hey Jude or Honey Pie sessions. Oh, Honey, that's what I meant. Honey Pie, not Martha, my dear. Oh, the the solo of Honey on... Pie is terrible. You think it's John though? Oh yeah. Cuz I've heard people say that they think like that solo is reminiscent of a 30s style song. It's a horrible solo. There there's a quote from one of the Beatles saying John was just putting his hand on the neck in random places and stumbled on the solo. I think it's from George or Paul. I'll, I'll have to find it somewhere. That makes more sense, yeah. Do you hear J one sixty a little bit in that song? So that's yeah. another episode. Oh yeah, yeah, that I think I have seen. Plugged that in J one sixty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh okay. I'll Next. demo it on mine one of these and he's days. Still got the bracket. Oh my god. That's August. This is September eighteenth. There's Ringo with the double bass drums. Right. That's the first photo Aww. of his maple Hollywood kit. Killer. Um, so shiny. Is yeah, the I'm bracket gonna... there? Yeah, Is that a jazz there. bass? Uh, yeah. That's oh, the jazz cool. bass. Where's the bass? I don't see it. It's oh, leaning there. up against this thing here. Yeah, side view of it. Bracket the side still headstock. There. Um, October 1st. Oh, I didn't get a good angle of it. Was the bracket there in uh in the rock and roll circus? Uh I don't know. I don't think so. Because now I'm right like before we get back. 
and you don't see it at all during right. get well, back. Well, we can't really mm. tell if it's there for that photo. Emotionally invested in this. <laughs> Next time yeah. we get now, this is um, Paul doing overdubs on why can't we do it in the road, or maybe just the lead part on his casino uh, mm. in the control room. So probably going direct. Is that right? Uh, and yeah, I guess that's all there's to say about that one. Um, this is the get back on. session. Good. So sometime yeah. probably around yeah. October, he took it off. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny that it lasted that long. Um, yeah. Didn't uh, even notice that. Let's see. Yeah, then we, you guys can go watch the Get Back documentary if you want to see the casino. Should we show talk about White Album times. songs? There's a lot. To yeah, get let's there. let's talk about White Album songs. I've got at least thirteen. Ooh. And I'll just move through them quick. If and there's discussion, just interject. Yeah. Real quick before you say that, sure. just to recap, George's casino never shows up in the session photos uh, for the White Album. So you got keep well, it's either Paul by that point. So it's either Paul or John on Casino. Well, I mean, he might have used it still, but I don't know. It just doesn't show up in the photos. We'll start with back in the USSR. Mm-hmm. There's oh. got to be at least one, right? Yeah. There are like four guitar parts on this track. Yeah, it's got to be on there, but it's probably that. Well, that it's definitely not the um the what is it the the lead solo part. The, There's that also bit a that lot of bass sixes up there. We'll have to do a deep dive on just that song. It's just people really want a deep dive yeah. back in the USSR. Next um, is Dear Prudence. Ones. Dear Prudence, obviously, John's on the casino. Absolutely. Well, some people in this whole podcast <laughs> disagreed about that. But I think it's John on the casino middle. Position. Yeah, it it yeah it is. I've got happiness as a warm gun. John also on the casino. Yep. Doing the yeah. Yeah. Style. Yep. But this, what's the solo? That is a fretless guitar. You think it actually is the fretless? Absolutely. I did it with Les Paul, and I I think it it pulled it off without you it did fretless, but so that's another episode. They um, even said they even talked about it being a fretless guitar. There's some well, there's audio. that interview of John, and he it, says he's messing with the fretless guitar. Right? Yeah, that's all I've yeah. heard confirmation mm -hmm. they actually used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But continue. I'm so tired. Yes. Oh, that glass onion. Are we are we going in order? I don't have glass onion. I thought that was George That's on George. Later. Okay, yeah, I thought you were just right. asking. Which okay, but yeah, I don't think glass yeah. onion is has it either. Yeah. Um, I'm so tired. I think John's on rhythm, and I think didn't someone think that was the J160 with the pickup? I one? I did. Uh, I could. I sent that sample uh, a yeah, while ago. I could buy that. That it's the J160. There's so pictures of him with it that day into the deluxe amp. So, so yeah. no, no casino on that. Well, we don't know. I mean, I, my bet could be either one. But if it if the J one sixty is there, there's no casino, right? Because George's SG or something. Right. Right. Yeah. And then, um, why why don't we do it in the road? Which I forgot. That's, Thank you guys for bringing that up. Paul yep. playing yeah. casino. Yep. A birthday. Yes. Definitely got to be a casino. Absolutely. Only. Your blues, John on rhythm. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Same with me and my monkey, John on rhythm. Mm hmm. Sexy Sadie. Um. Someone's doing those arpeggios throughout the song. I thought it was the casino on neck pickup. Could be the SG as well. Yeah, it's hard or to Les tell. Paul. Yeah, it is. There was a theory that it was the J160, but I don't know if I... Oh, God, no. Huh. It's overdriven. It'll be a mystery. Yeah. And then a big one, Helter Skelter. What do we think? Yes. He's on base six. So, yeah, but, but I think yeah, John Paul is. I'm saying it's Paul, Paul's using his casino. Yeah, that's yeah. a big debate. Mm -hmm. So it might be the Esquire. That's Could be. The oh, yeah. I think it's got to be the casino, right? If it's for that song, he's gonna get the thing with the you most feedback. You hear Bigsby on it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. Honey Pie, John playing that solo that we all yeah. love. Uh, oh it's yeah, it's great. Yeah. Savoy Truffle. I said probably not. No. There is lead guitar, but. Probably George. Yeah. And Les Paul, yeah. yeah. Yep. Revolution one. Uh John on lead guitar on the intro. Uh, yeah, I think so. That's an acoustic. Or is it that, that, is uh, that the, where uh, the chunky the rattling sound comes from? <laughs> Maybe that's the um, bracket. 
<laughs> That'd be amazing oh, yeah. if that was the bracket. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just the. Uh... Well, that's uh, that's George, isn't it? Is it George? Yeah, I thought John was the one doing the little riff at the beginning. The do 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 do. You, you know, with uh, Rocky into the basement on the um, it was the first day of the White Album. The the pictures show Rocky mm. into basement, but I don't think that was what they kept on the song. All right, let me throw out a wild theory that I just came up with that I don't think is true, but it's funny. Um, because the bracket was still around at that point, uh, Revolution 1 is the song where John... Well, I guess he didn't play the guitar on the ground. He recorded the vocals while lying on the studio floor, but I guess he didn't do the guitar that way. So I was thinking, like, what if at that <laughs> angle the bracket vibrated <laughs> when playing the guitar because he's not standing up? And then it fell into the guitar. That's why it <laughs> disappeared. Yeah. No. Yeah. You'll have to do an AI video recreation of that. Oh incident. my gosh. <laughs> uh, so what do you think for that one? What are you guys thinking? Revolution? Yeah, for Revolution 1. The Revolution I think one. it's George on the acoustic rhythm. It sounds too clean to be John. In my yeah, opinion. yeah. And um, that riff, I think it's one of John's favorites, the Chuck Berry riff. He used it on the faster version too. And I think that's indisputably uh. John. So. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. But it's he all good. On that. Some sort yeah. of big speed on the single version of Revolution. George's part, you hear some sort of whammy bar. So it could be big speed or SG. Um, and you miss Cry Baby Cry. What it's last on my that? list. Yeah, that was the last one. Is yeah. that. What is that? Probably it, George on Les Paul. Yeah, there are fills in the middle. Um, and yeah. I agree. It's probably a Les Paul neck pickup in George. Because, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's the white album. Did we say monkey? Everybody, yeah. Yep. Something to hide? Okay. Yep. I'm just going through, making sure we got everything. So that was about 14 tracks, heavily yeah. used on the white album. Yeah, and, and obviously on the early version of Good Night. But yeah. Um. Okay, back to photos. <laughs> Once again. Oh boy. Uh, now we're into we get through Let It Be already, and get yeah, back? I didn't put that many because it's all over the i mean it's just on everything that he plays on the root which literally I, everything yeah means that um well not um not like uh for you blue two of us uh, yeah two of us that's a j200 yeah um that was martin on that i'm um, two of us yeah you see him playing it at the end of uh the movie was it the it's, martin i didn't i didn't yeah. look too hard um but yeah, everything else, everything electric that John plays, because I don't think they ever plugged in the J160 or anything, right? So everything no, electric John the plays seal. is Casino. <laughs> yeah. Um. And he's not and, on uh, like any of George's songs, right? Oh no, no, that's uh, not right. He's well, on. Well, that's where we get into the "Let It Be," "I Me Mine" stuff. If you count that, yeah, we can save that for later. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so that gets through all the let it be sessions um now we're oh i skipped a few okay so that's february 1st do you have any this pictures is... from the ballad of john and yoko session that's in 1970 pictures? right i've got it was released may 30th 69 before the white album oh. came out. okay yeah. there's no photos from that day but we have a little like brown old brown shoe i think i don't remember what this day is this is april that's 26th octopus's, uh garden so yeah, that's this is this is John on Casino and George on Telly, right? Mm-hmm. And through Twin Reverbs, probably. Uh, I've got, got another photo of that. Um, now we've got May first. This is the first appearance of George's uh, Casino again, and he took the Bigsby arm off. Oh man. So what's going on with that? Probably got sick of it. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Wait, wait, hold on. Weird observation. Zoom back into that again. Was I here seeing something? This, this isn't Paul's casino, is it? No, no. But zoom back into the <laughs> yeah. They, where they took the finish off and put it back what, somehow. What is going on with the bar there? Did he? No. I... It's what just bar? part of the big speed that's yeah. sticking out. Yeah, no, yeah, I know what you mean. It looks like it looked he just like... got cut off or something, but no. No, I think it looked just... like he took it out. No. Yeah, I think not. it's just it's just taken out fully, and is then that, have... that piece is still there. Does he have Grover's uh, on? Yeah, he does. At this point. 
Yeah. I think this is. I don't know why he sanded that too. guitar. It was so pretty. There you go. There's another picture. Donovan peer pressured him into doing it. I guess. Screw you, Donovan. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone here actually tried stripping the finish on a guitar to see if it sounds different? For some well, reason, I feel like it wouldn't really work on these Chinese ones. But like, I don't know why. No, because I think that... the Chinese ones are plywood. Yeah. I mean, Paul, you haven't tried that. No, I haven't. Well, he just buys them like that. I mean, so did you. <laughs> uh, we got to remember the finish was different. I mean, you know, you, the Chinese ones was a polyurethane finish. The old, you know, Epiphone ones were uh, were nitrocellulose. So this I think it actually did affect the tone. Mentioned that uh, Paul stripped his Rickenbacker bass by this point as well. Yeah. This is um. This is on a session for Billy Preston. Uh, also, just to point it out, because I don't know what the heck we're looking at here. This We just noticed this when we were looking at these photos earlier. Something really odd is going on here on this headstock, and I don't... I, there's some just kind of reflection or something, but I have no clue what's causing that. You don't see it later with George's Epiphone. Yeah, so I don't know. I think it was just it. some camera thing. Um, back to Paul's. Paul has the. I think we saw this earlier, but the Bigsby is back on, so he only took it off for a little bit or that part. What session is that for, Ryan? This is it's Abbey uh, Road, right? Yeah, this is hey, Abbey Road. Sarah, this is Sarah. Oh, right. July sixth. Right. Yeah, this for is old Mary for, Hopkin. Um, Mary Hopkin, yeah. Same day. And he's got the capo on the first fret. And the you black. See the oh, that's interesting. finish on I the didn't sides that there before. Too. The black yeah, is yeah. all there still on his Bigsby. That is a that next photo. It's a good example of the burst. It looks good in that photo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can um, see it pretty well on the sides there. Yeah. Now this next photo. This is the July 9th. I think this is Maxwell Silverhammer. Maxwell's. And this is yeah. uh, Paul for the the solo bit. It's Paul on a casino and then George on the Telecaster, right? Both mm -hmm. are twin reverbs. Yeah. Uh, Leslie or was it a Leslie? I don't, no, I don't think there was a Leslie on the one. Um, the next this photo we've got here is the end. Yeah, it's the end. Yeah, the capo one five. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, this is obviously John. Uh, this is July twenty third with sandals. Oh, uh, John looking pretty good. May I coming say? off the street, very healthy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is this, not... How close is yeah. this photo to the day that he said he thought he realized he was Jesus? What? You know that story. Where he came no. in one day and he told the rest of me, he's like, guys, I got a real serious thing to tell you. I realized today <laughs> that I am the reincarnation of Jesus. Heroin is a hell of a drug. It really is. Uh, Stay I away know, from it. I don't know when that when that took place, but I'm sure it's sometime around this time. That's he's like he's wearing time. sandals and he looks like Jesus. It had to be yeah. like the day before this. <laughs> yeah. Or Good maybe up. it was the day of. Yeah. Uh, there's another one of that. You can see Paul in the background. They're really baffling it up in here. I think um, what he's doing is like... Yeah. Let me show you. Yeah. Play it again? I don't know why he needed a capo for it, but... Play it again real quick. I Just so you can see it. Yeah. Throughout the entire solo piece. At the end of the end. Yeah. The end of the end. Uh... I think that's it. So I missed some somewhere in there, and Sam can show those. The the deal with George taping his. That's after anyway. Um, oh, is that in seventy? Yeah, should we that's talk why about Abbey Road. It. Yeah, um, we we can do it song by song. Um, come together. I think mm -hmm. rhythm yeah. is probably George on the Les Paul. Mm -hmm. But the lead solos. Do we think that's a casino or dueling casinos? Um, the whole song is probably is... just Les Paul. Really? Even the yeah. solo? Yeah, probably. Are you saying John's not playing guitar on it? He's not. So there's there's uh, contradicting accounts. Like, uh, I think Paul said that, that uh, George played. Uh, yeah, Ringo um, said John played. Probably House had this thing where there was some hidden John Casino part. But John is singing Shoot Me with the Claps, so he couldn't have been... He did that all on the basic track. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there are pictures of John at the mic doing this, too. I don't know if we can pull them up, but yeah. Hmm. The next one was Oh Darling, 
I think yep. we have John, John on a casino, yeah, doing the stabs, the rhythm stabs, and the arpeggios in the middle eight. And he's not on something at all, right? It's on piano on something, which was removed from the track. Oh, okay. Oh, Maxwell oh. Silver Hammer. We missed. He's, uh, yeah, we got that. Ball. We talked about that. Yeah. Uh, I want you. She's so heavy. Yep. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Casino's on that. Uh, this one's questionable, but who's playing guitar on "Because"? That would be John, I believe. You don't think it's too difficult for John? No. What's the guitar on part the on that? Does anyone play it? <laughs> it was oh, a capo yeah. on four, but. Right, and um, here comes the sun has a little electric on it, but it's probably Telly or yeah. Yeah, I don't. I assume John's just not on. Here comes the sun, except for vocals. I guess out of all of the Beatles albums, Abbey Road was the one he contributed the least to in guitar. Uh, Next one I got is "You Never Give Me Your Money," which I think John is playing lead guitar towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. And then Sun King, me, Mr. Mustard. Sam, your cover had John on rhythm on the casino. Through a Leslie. Yep. And then the next questionable one was Polythene Pam and Bathroom Window, the lead guitar parts. Polythene Pam, uh, he's doing the 12 string acoustic, right? Maybe yeah. Paul? Paul on the casino playing lead guitar? It was George. I think, I think George. we have info about that one. Les Paul. Hmm. Well, that's it for Abbey Road. Looks like maybe four confirmed and a couple questionable. And we the, didn't get into the end, end solos yeah. and all that. And he's but... the oh, third, yeah. the third of the three end solos. And Paul is probably also. So the solo orders it it rotates Paul George John Paul George John Paul George John and then George does another thing at the end. And some people debate Esquire versus Casino for uh. oh, interesting. It's probably probably just a Casino. I don't know. Michael did it with the uh, telly, right? It was a telly, yeah. I don't know how close I got, though. I was, I was more concerned about the notes than the tone. Like, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Could be either. Um, and but either the, way, there's, and... a, there's a casino because John's playing. Right. Uh, that whole part on uh, the end. Yeah, I assume that was the Les Paul, George on the Les Paul. There's yeah. two parts, like, left and right, doing them together, yeah. and then the... That whole thing might be Les Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would probably. Um, and then we didn't get into Old Brown Shoe or uh, Ballad of John and Yoko. So I John, assume and Yoko... Of John and Yoko is casinos. Yeah. Because yeah. that's just John and Paul on that recording. And Paul is doing drums and bass, right? Yeah. I think so. And Old Brown Shoe is a bit of a uh, whole other episode we could get into as well. Well, what's your... like who played who played piano who played guitar who played drums some people say Ringo or Paul and the solo was definitely George on telly but who did the that's a big what if or do you who, think John's on the song I my theory well Michael and I've talked about this that Paul had to have played drums uh, Ringo had to have played drums <laughs> not Paul so who was doing you can hear piano and the electric part so who was doing what and I think I think it was Paul or John doing the and that George was on the piano um, but I who's, don't know who's doing bass on that I think George has an overdub Yeah, yeah. So too. the way that riff is played on the bass is the exact same way as the lead guitar and like it's, it's played the, jazz the exact bass. same way Base I would six. get base six. Base six. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Well, is that everything? We get we get it all. Uh, do we think it's Ballad of John and Yoko that there's um, casinos? Yeah, absolutely. Doing? Yep. I I don't know, I don't know what else John would have been using. Yeah. For sure, it's casino. All right. Now, how that about, takes um, us to um to May nineteen seventy. The taped yeah, casino session. Yeah. yeah. There such it a, is. Such a cool photo. You see tape on George's. And the Bigsby arm's gone still. 
Yeah, I never noticed that. And so this was the Let It Be I Me Mind sessions. Uh, John was already out of the group at this point. And um, George is playing a uh, casino with taped up F holes to get rid of feedback into, we see twin reverbs, but that's the another debate is that the, um, the solo to I Me Mine and Let It Be, it's hard to get a crunchy tone like that on the twin reverb. So oh, definitely. did he use a fuzz face? Did he plug in direct? Um, we know he used the casino, so we don't have to get into that. Cool. Um, would it be worth bringing up ding dong, ding dong? <laughs> yeah, maybe in our Christmas film, episode. Yeah, you might have to fill yeah. me in. I actually don't know what that is. The the um, George Harrison song where he brought out all oh. the, uh, you know, it was an awful song, but <laughs> I can share my screen real quick. Yeah, his his casino makes an appearance in the music video as well as his Rick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, she is. Uh, you can't see the Bigsby arm at all in this, can you? That's no. the closest you can see. Yeah. yeah. Is it, can we pull up a picture of like Danny's set of collection of them? Yeah. Let me um try and it, ooh, those Beatles. In 1987, George did a bit for Guitar Player magazine. And uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it at all. Uh I can I can send it in afterwards, but uh he took a bunch of photos of his guitars and uh kind of wrote captions for him and there's a photo of his casino i can pull he, that up he talked about it well, i can't remember I, what exactly he said but uh this is danny's old guitar well, it's um, got a big spear arm definitely app. there does it yeah My computer's freaking out but um yeah this was recently like 2000s 2011 danny took pictures of all of george's guitars and you see the gold grovers and uh, a lot of cool info about his guitar and uh george even demoed it I oh the uh it's not the screw that. though it's cat he didn't demo the casino did he he did i have that if you want me to find it it will take me a few minutes but what you can see george's I, serial I number there go back to I a don't... photo where you can see the the bixby arm oh man yeah i'll, I'll try to find dumb yeah there's no screw on it Whoa! That means it. he was replaced. Holy cow! So that's not the original Bigsby arm. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find the thing that Dom was talking about. You see it in George's collection. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, he's holding the. Look uh, up. Uh, just look up George Harrison Guitar yeah. Player Magazine. I think that's yeah. it right there on the right. Call. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But it's Where? like. Uh, look up uh, George Harrison Guitar Player Magazine, 1987. Yeah, we have a lot to get through with the solo Beatles stuff, too. So yeah, see, there's uh, George's there Guitar is. Gallery, so you can look at some of the related images, I think, and you'll be able to find it. Yeah, I think we should save Casino. We can quickly Here it is. mention what it is on solo yeah. stuff. But uh, yeah, I also have so John Lennon played it on Imagine and Plastic Ono Band sessions. Okay, cool. Paul McCartney played it on McCartney sessions and Wings th throughout his whole Wings yeah. career. Really, um, he's uh, even used it up until recently, like the last record. And he's one used more it live thing, constantly, right? Yeah, he still uses it. But there's one more thing that I like to add. Um, Ron D. Marino was John's uh, guitar tech in New York City and according to him uh, right before he died John wanted to have his casino refinished in a sunburst obviously that never happened but my guess is he probably would have taken it on tour with him in 81 a um, little interesting bit of trivia there but uh, it's interesting. I don't know kind of sad Food for thought, I guess. Yeah. I just wanted to show um, by 71, Paul took the pick guard off his uh, casino hmm. for McCartney sessions. He still had the pick guard. And he, I don't think he ever put it back on. No, I don't think he did. I wonder either. if he, like, do you think he still has it? <laughs> <laughs> How much would that pick guard go for at auction? Just the pick guard. Do you think Yoko still has the bracket to John's? <laughs> I mean, that's no the. Way. <laughs> it probably just fell off like everything else. 
<laughs> Maybe that's his argument know. about the finish. He's like, oh, I didn't get it stripped. It fell off. <laughs> Just like everything else. The finish fell off? Yeah, the finish fell off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, I want to well... see if I can find George's clip before we go. I, I uh, hate to keep you guys. I, I mean, you're fine. Take a minute. We can find the clip. I, I, dude, I forgot about that. I had that app. I was like in like fifth grade or something like, like that. 2011 or something yeah. like that. Was it um, worth it? Like, can you see? Yeah, it was, it was so car? worth it. Yeah. It's discontinued. So I he, the only way that I'm finding this is because I took screenshots like eight years ago of it. But like he had, Danny had George sit down with each of his guitars and play Beatles riffs on them. Oh, shit. In like Not 99. Yeah, it was clips, crazy. But yeah, you can hear him say like Stratocaster and then play it. <laughs> he did. Uh, casino. He, he sat down with the Rick 12 and played Hard Day's Night and you Are can't you do that. Yeah. Yep. God damn. It's really cool. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. How has that not surfaced anywhere? Like YouTube. You could for... always ask Danny. We're gonna You'd think it would have popped up in Beak Gear Cavern, but right, yeah. everything seems to pop up there. There are YouTube right, clips of Danny. I think he's with Conan O'Brien. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He yeah, pulls out the uh, Rose Wood Telly. That yeah. was for this um, guitar the same project. Yeah. That's all I've seen. Again, it's an acoustic. Acoustic. <laughs> Great duo jazz. Yeah. This is awesome. Doesn't he play help here? Yeah. Yeah. So if you ever wanted to know if the help riff ever got played on the duo jet, this is your answer. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful. (laughs) Got a great sound, too. Yeah. So I started you. Looking for the casino, sorry. I'm so glad you took these. Like, that's priceless. Wait, you just you just had it. George Love. No, it's our Fender. Uh, Zenith, 12 string. Zematis, 12 <laughs> string acoustic. <laughs> should find a casino. Epiphone on a casino. Out of tune. Very and he's, out of he's not using the pick there too. He's just doing. Yeah. Crazy that Danny had the foresight to do that. Yeah, I wish we had more of that. Yeah. Oh man. It's like how there's one YouTube video of Paul doing a bass lesson and it's some dumb solo song. It's yeah. Like I've got too much on my yeah. plate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I do some Beatles. Show us a Beatles riff. <laughs> he wouldn't do that. Are you kidding? No, absolutely not. He's already played it enough. <laughs> he's he's sick of it. So if you guys had to pick one of the Beatles guitars to own, which of the three would you choose? What oh which of the three casinos? Mm-hmm. Oh. Probably Paul's. George's. Kind of rules out Paul's because none of us are left handed. But his isn't a left handed one. You would you restring it to be right hand? Okay. Yeah. You would take off Paul's strings? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'd throw them away. I'd sell them. <laughs> I mean, John's is pretty iconic. I was just going to say the exact same John's. thing. Yeah, John's is iconic. Yeah, yeah. It was the footage and anthology of the Nowhere Man performance in Germany that made me want a casino, like, immediately. Like, that chiming bridge pickup sound yeah. for Paul. 
Yeah, it's glorious. Yeah, it's cool to hear in um, 66, like Candlestick Park, how crunching, like, Day Tripper is, like... It's almost well, they were fuzzy. Yeah. Driving their amps to the limits. Those are the 100 watts, weren't they? Yeah, they don't crunch up, though. A whole lot. I mean, I guess they would with, like... Crappy know. PA systems, maybe. Um... Yeah, what the thing you, I think I would have chosen George's. <laughs> no, no, I'm just here for the ride. I'm just. I want to know which. Paul, you've been so you quiet. Do. Speak up, Paul. Which guitar would you own? Oh, um, John's probably. Interesting. <laughs> Why? <is> well that? said. <laughs> <laughs> would you with or without the bracket? Without the bracket. <laughs> I think I might have said George's if it still had the burst on it. Yeah, that was call. such a nice burst. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm sure people are thinking this has gone on long enough. <laughs> but I think this is a great episode, though. You guys did a hell of a lot of research too, and it shows. Yeah, great job all around. Yeah, this was this was a good you guys, one. You guys know a lot a lot about the uh, 68 69 era that I I couldn't have matched those photos to the sessions as well as you guys were. I know the early stuff better. So Michael far. did his research for his first official episode oh yeah trying to impress you guys yeah i'm a fan of you guys there's it always works. a chance he could get voted out so he's got to be on his stay on his toes <laughs> yeah we listed demands <laughs> oh you guys you made out. him leave again <laughs> all right oh. well if you made it this far yeah uh, good job uh, yeah <laughs> thanks for watching um <laughs> yeah well we'll be back in two weeks again hopefully uh yeah i think maybe like a parting thought is if you're a beginner guitarist a casino is a great entry level guitar too yeah like, it is it's been one of my favorite guitars since i was 12 13 it's affordable and even that one which is now 18 years old is still extremely playable they hold up well like they're durable yeah they what what are they going for 500 now the chinese they're cheap ones? yeah yeah I remember back in the olden days of 2018 when you could get one of those for 350. <laughs> but thanks, Joe Biden. One. <laughs> <laughs> but cool. Well, thanks for watching. Check out our other stuff. Subscribe. Uh, all that. All that jazz. And thanks uh, to Michael for joining us officially. Hopefully, he doesn't regret it soon. <laughs> but, this was a blast. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you all in the next one. Oh, yeah.